So what equipment do you need to photograph the 2024 solar eclipse? The 2024 solar eclipse is going to be one of the best eclipses out there for the northern states, mainly because it's not going to be a partial eclipse, but yet a total eclipse. Now, in order to photograph the 2024 eclipse, you're going to need some pretty good equipment for this. Now, not extremely good. You don't have to buy the most expensive equipment, but I will give you some tips on what I recommend to buy for the eclipse. You're going to need a solar filter. A solar filter basically blocks out the white light so your camera sensor doesn't get burnt out and you can actually see the details on the sun. Now there's different degrees of solar filters and there's HA filters and all that stuff, but that gets really expensive. So we're not gonna talk about that. Instead today, I'm gonna talk about like camera lens filters, telescope filters. You're gonna need like a filter that is capable of blocking out the sunlight enough to where you can see like sunspots at least, because even in an eclipse, you're probably not gonna see many solar flares because the moon's gonna be blocking the sun's view. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is though, you're gonna need a solar eclipse filter like for a telescope. So for example, if you have the Celestron C8 telescope, you're going to need the C8 solar filter by Celestron. And I'd recommend definitely practicing with these solar filters. And if you have a DSLR, then get one for your camera lens. You're definitely gonna need to practice though on these things because if, especially if you've never done solar imaging before, you're gonna need to practice on you know getting the sun before you actually do the solar uh, imaging, the solar eclipse imaging. Um, so what I recommend doing is um, putting the solar filter on, you know, taking a lot of photos, taking videos. Um, videos are, uh, in my opinion, the best, but not when it comes to solar eclipses. I would do photos for that. Um, unless, of course, you want to record a live, like, um, like shadowing of the solar eclipse where it goes over the sun and then uh, goes out. But that, that would be for video. But if you were going to do, like, a bunch of photos then, and then stack them in, like, a software like Photoshop, that would work, too. Um, there's lots of different ways to photograph eclipses. Um, generally photos have higher resolution, so you can get a lot higher resolution in a uh, photo than you would with a bunch of videos and stacking videos like in uh, auto stacker. But I would definitely recommend uh, taking photos if you're looking for higher resolution. In order to photograph this solar eclipse, you're definitely going to need some kind of DSLR or um, mirrorless camera or a dedicated astronomy camera because if you don't have those, then um, a phone, I don't know if they sell solar eclipses for, or solar eclipse filters for phones. If they do, that'd be really cool. I don't know because I never tried it or looked it up. So I'm not really sure, but I know they for sure sell it for like camera lenses and stuff. So I would definitely look that kind of stuff up. Also, I have an ND filter I use for my DSLR, which is a really high powered ND filter. You can also get an ND filter, I'm pretty sure. Um, I, Cause I use it and I'm always fine with it. I can see some sunspots on it too. Just make sure you get a higher, high enough powered ND filter for your DSLR. Um, Cause if it's not high enough power, um, it's probably, you're risking uh, your camera. So I would definitely not get an underpowered ND filter for like solar imaging. In order to photograph the eclipse, you gotta catch it right away. So you gotta have already be prepared hours before the eclipse happens. I would definitely recommend doing this because if you're not prepared hours before that eclipse happens, well, the eclipse is only gonna last like two to three minutes um, when it's in its prime. So I would definitely um, prepare beforehand, maybe take the day off work. If you're really wanting to photograph it, like really, like if you really are into it, um, if it's on a work day, just to, just to make sure you're setting it up because it depends, it would depend on your hours and everything. But um, you definitely wanna make sure you have time to set up. I'm not saying you should, I'm saying it's probably, wise to set up early. Another thing I definitely recommend is making sure you have something to protect your eyes. When framing up the sun, you don't want to, you know, burn out your eyes or anything like by looking directly at the sun when you're trying to frame up, do not do that. Use eclipse glasses at all costs, especially during the eclipse because it'll be easy just to look at the eclipse. So use them, use eclipse glasses for sure. Um, also, by the way, my name is Asher and if you didn't know, um, I run Astrotography Quest, this channel. Um, I make tips about astrophotography and all sorts of space related videos. So if you like the kind of content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, I hope you get a great photo of the eclipse. And anyways, until next time, clear skies.